Um, my next question, uh, Masoud, is you make this bold move in writing this book, which is, I repeat it, it's a personal quest, literally. And, and that's why it is so well written, because you could tell that this is you speaking your heart about your growing up and you missing your grandparents, may they rest in peace. And from what you said during our preparation that people did write to you saying that I was experiencing the same thing and I have the same questions in my mind. Um, what's the way forward according to you having written this book when it comes to Arab Jews across the world? How do you, in an ideal world, what's the way forward for you? There were, uh, as you said, quite a few people who are of similar backgrounds who also identify as Jewish Arabs who contacted me uh, after having read the book or at one of the book events who told me that, yes, this is a conversation that needs to be had and that we are now having. And uh, that is a kind of moving forward. The book starts from a very personal place. Or I shouldn't say that it starts from a very personal place. At its core, it's, it's, it's very personal because I endeavor to speak for myself and bring my own personal kind of political theories to bear on my own story, my own family. But very broadly, it's a book about how we discuss race universally, whether race should exist in the terms that we describe. This has been a conversation that I think a lot of people are able to have at an academic level, but that hasn't become prevalent enough in society yet that we don't, we shouldn't view race as a science. That should stand to reason after throughout history, eugenics and Nazism and so many other examples of how race is a false science that's used to, to murder and dispossess countless people. And yet we in society at large don't really have conversations about how, like all borders, the borders between different races are a social construct, that they don't really exist in reality. That things that may stand to reason to people in their status quo understanding of things, the, the, the boundary between Jewish and Arab, for instance, that boundary doesn't really exist. It is a manifestation of social engineering. So there is a universal political theory that hopefully will feed into a conversation that's happening right now about colorism, white supremacy, how we look at race, how we identify ourselves either with or against other people. Uh, that we need to recognize experiences with privilege and with systemic racism while also destroying the concept of race. That's very uh, crucial and difficult for us to uh, imagine a way forward where we dismantle whiteness in its many forms and white supremacy while still recognizing the terror and killing and dispossession that whiteness continues to wreak on communities and nations and households of color around the world. So there's that. And then also it's a theory of Arabness. I think that something that I want for people to understand is that this is not a book about the corner of the Arab experience that's Jewish Arab alone. It is about the corner of the Arab experience that is Jewish Arabness. Yes, that is an important part of it. But more broadly, it is about Arabness. And insofar as it is about Arabness, it is about the world and the way that non-Arab people can view themselves and the lines between themselves and other people. Arabness needs to allow its most kind of marginal corners to help to define what Arabness is. I don't think until now many Arabs 
have asked themselves what constitutes Arabness. I don't think that people like Eric Zemmour have ever asked themselves what constitutes this Arabness that I use as a four-letter word. What constitutes Arabness? For them, it's blood. For them, it's holy books. For them, it's legends and stories. That doesn't comport with what actual Arabist people have been talking about, about including people who are pale, dark, of all different religions and religious sects, of all different political affinities. That is to the detriment of our region, that is to the detriment of accountable government in our region. We know that pluralism is important for accountable government and accountable societies. Our societies are suffering back home from the divide and conquer, the politic of divide and conquer, and the inability to ask ourselves, what is Arabness? If I'm able to feel a sense of camaraderie with somebody from Sudan who has a very different uh, skin color than mine, if that Sudanese person chooses to identify with an Arab legacy. If I have a similar experience to somebody in Syria, if I feel a, a, a sense of family with them, what is the political implication of that? It's monumental, it's overwhelming, and it terrifies the West. There are problems with Arabness, of course. There are ways in which uh, Arabness in the past has resembled the Make America Great Again moment. And that is absolutely the opposite of what I am uh, advocating for. What I am advocating for is upending whatever it is about Arabness that has become insufferable even to so many people who could choose that identity themselves. It is a call to question why the term Arab incenses people so much because the reality is if it incenses you, maybe you are a victim of these generations of imperialist inculcation that I describe in when we were Arabs. Maybe no. it's time for you to have a, a Fanon moment of realization. 